So South Africa have won the toss. And see Cronier has decided to bat first on what looks to be a very good batting pitch. It looks hard and dry. Pakistan scored 245 here last week and Sri Lanka responded with 233. So there are runs out there and the prediction is that perhaps 240 will be required today, although we as commentators haven't got it right on tour yet. That's right. This time uh, Pringle has Andrew Hudson searching outside the off stump. Well, Dave Callahan gets four runs with his first shot of this Mandela Trophy series. Just clipping away with Simon Dool backward of point for four. Yes, well Dave Callahan has just come into the South African side. In fact, the average is around about 15 or 16 in one day international cricket. He's replaced Gary Kirsten. And the first ball he's got there from Simon Dool's a poor one, but he certainly uh, made hay and got that one to the boundary. Simon Dool disappointing in the last game, bought his 10 overs and conceded 67 runs, so he's just struggled with his line and length, and quite frankly, he can't afford to bowl too many of those. That's well bowled by Simon Dool, very much on target now, and that's good. Dool again. On again, this one's wide of the off stump, and he could be out, and he has been, and that's well taken by Mark Priest down there. And so not a great delivery, and one would say a poor shot, perhaps an unlucky shot there for Andrew Hudson. And the Bank of New Zealand replay will show that it was short and wide outside the off stump. Callaghan playing a similar shot, got away with it for four, got under it. And really that's been, it's carried to Mark Priest down there. So a good breakthrough for New Zealand, a very important start for them. Well that's a gift wicket to Simon Dool, it really was a poor delivery. Shortish and wide of the off stump, and as Richard said in the last over, Dave Callaghan put one of those for four. Well, Andrew Hudson puts his into the hands of Mark Priest. So he's the first wicket to fall for three. And in the fourth over, South Africa, ten for one. Well, there's runs at this time for Callaghan. At least a couple. Just backward of square. That's a lovely shot through the offside. Cover drive, four runs. As he faces Chris Pringle and pushes and it's dropped. Certainly very well bowled there by Chris Pringle and Hansi Cronier just reaching for that one and the Bank of New Zealand replay will show that that ball just left him a little bit and I think it bounced in front. I think we've got to be fair to Brian Young there. Did well to stop it. Would have been a half volley job. But Hansi Cronier, he plays that shot a lot. And the fact that there are two slips in there at the moment, it could be quite a dangerous one. Just opens the face of the bat angles. It tries to run it down there to the third man area. Well, this time, uh, there's runs in practice four. So that's the first time that Chris Pringle has overpitched and perhaps just got a little bit too straight to Cronier. Needs to be a little more outside the off stump. Well, this time they'll look for two as Pringle does his own fielding. Yeah, very unusual to see uh, the bowler run to square leg. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> to pick that up, but of course that's the way the field positionings are. There's only two men on the leg side, and Cronier has worked the ball very nicely indeed. And uh, Chris Pringle hit the chase hard. There's no man there. There's mid on, of course. <laughs> Go Pring. <laughs> Wonderful cricket. <laughs> Well, there's probably four runs here for Hansi Cronier as it just beats the fielder over the fence. And it's in the outfield too, is a lot slower here and it's obviously a reflection of the rain that has fallen here in the last day or two. But normally the outfields are very fast. The Bank of New Zealand replay shows that Chris Pringle just drink, drifting leg side and Hansi Cronier, as most South Africans are, and English players for that matter, and Australian players, are very good on their legs. This one's off the pads, and this will run away for four leg buys. In fact, it does. So at the end of eight overs, South Africa now 38 for one. There's runs here for Callaghan. Cape Town wasn't a great track, but all the others that I've seen it should be producing 260 runs in one day cricket. Well, this one's swung away, and that's gone for six. Just dropping it short that time, Simon Dool and Dave Callahan very quickly into position. 
And as you can see on the Bank of New Zealand replay, swinging it away through mid-wicket. And that's a great shot. Well, if you're given the opportunity as a middle-order player to go up and open the batting in a one-day international, you're really given free licence. Well, this time he's been clipped away for four runs, just backward of square. Well, this time there's more runs for Hansi Cronier as Simon Dool gives chase. In fact, he gives up in the end, and that's four more. And the ball, oh. he's got oh. a perfect delivery, Murphy Sir, exactly where he had to bowl the first few balls of the over, and it's gone straight through first slip to four. Very unlucky for the bowler, if you finally get it right, and you don't get any reward. Well, as you can see on the Bank of New Zealand replay, finally Murphy Sewer puts it where it should be, hits the edge. This one's down the leg side, and this could go for four as well. In fact, it does. That's four leg buys. And at the end of the over now, South Africa 63 for one. And it's Martin Crow at short cover, and Stephen Fleming at a short mid-wicket. Well, he's put it over that fielder at short mid-wicket, and has pulled it away for four. Well, he really he does have to bowl full. He's got to get the player coming forward and just perhaps mistime things as they come into the drive. But he's dropped this short. And on the Bank of New Zealand replay, you'll see that's far too short. Gives the batsman far too much time to come back. Pull it over mid and that's an easy four runs. That's a gift. Well, that one's down the leg side from Murphy Sewer. There's an appeal. Umpire Carl Liebenberg showing total disinterest in the New Zealand appeals. One for 71. Chris Harris again strays a little bit in line. And again, the South Africans pick up two runs on the leg side. Well, that was just to the left of a diving Shane Thompson standing there at square leg. And as Chris Harris dropped it short and Dave Callahan pulled across the line, you could see Shane Thompson there stretching to his left. Just a bit wide of him. And he's repeated the shot and he's hit this one better. That's through mid-wicket for four runs. Well, Chris Harris really has to give the ball just a little bit more air than this. He's bowling slightly quicker than he has in the last couple of games. Oh, this one drops just short of Simon Dool. That fine leg and... Abe Callahan looking to get inventive with that shot. Perhaps he just got away with it. You can see it just spooned up and fell short of Simon Dool. And Dave Callaghan continues his very good batting form out there. And Chris Harris over pitching outside the off stump. A very nice cover drive. Back in New Zealand replay. We'll show that Chris Harris is too full. We often have a bit of a sweepstake, Jack, uh, in our commentary box as to what the score will be. Warren Lees has gone for 2.29. Chucky Shearer, our uh, director, he's got the highest score of 2.44. Cameraman's 2.22, that's Oars. Eric Young is 2.35. And I've gone for 2.42. I think we're all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I think you will be, but uh, I think New Zealand had settled for any of you being right. Now that is exactly the shot which Hansi Cronier dealt with Shane Warne. He hit him for seven sixes in One Day Internationals last year, or earlier this year. Gets his left leg outside the line, doesn't hit round his leg, but makes room. I certainly don't think that he's 100% fit by any means. So Cronier now brings up his 50, and that's well played. Captain of South Africa, standing ovation there for that man out there. And that's poor bowling from Chris Harris, just dropping too short down the leg side, and Dave Callaghan now reaches his 50. That's his first 50 in one day international cricket, and well played too, a standing ovation as one would expect. Four more. Well, I don't know where this consistency is. I mean, these fellows are professionals out there. It's their job. I'm sure you can have an off day, but you can't expect four or five bowlers to have off days. 
And Chris Harris just not up to it today, but beautiful stroke play as the Bank of New Zealand replay shows, and it's gone classically through the offside, through the covers, really dissecting the two men there. And that's a great drive there from Dave Callahan. That's four runs through mid-off. We see the replay here, courtesy of Bank of New Zealand. Overpitched. Must hit the deck a wee bit more than that. And of course he's well into position. Flows the bat through the ball, hits it straight down to mid-off. And Pringle coming around from mid-on really had no chance to stop that. But it's pulled away again by Callahan. At the end of the over, South Africa now 148 for one. For the top, and he's dropped by Murphy Sewer at long on. Well, that's a huge disappointment, not only for Shane Thompson and for Murphy Sewer, but for New Zealand, really. One thing they do need right now is wickets. Well, that's the sort of wicket that you've got to keep the pressure on. You've got to pick these up. I know it was low, it was flat. Murphy Sewer, unfortunately, just couldn't hold on to it, and the whole New Zealand team will be rather disappointed. And this time he could be out. Brian Young takes a fine running catch. Now, that's a brilliant catch by Brian Young, and it's made up for the, the miss earlier on the over. He's running around from Wideman Wicket, well above his head. Throws his hands up. It may have been six had he not caught this. But Brian Young has really given 100% in the field today, and that's the end of Hansi Cronje. So the second South African wicket has fallen, that of Hansi Cronje. As you can see on the Bank of New Zealand replay, really looking to get on with his work there, Cronje. And Brian Young will just come into your picture now, and you, as you can see, both legs off the ground, both arms upstretched above him, and that is a beautiful running catch. Standing ovation for Hansi Cronje here at Centurion Park. He's out, caught Young, Bowl Thompson for 68, and in the 30th over, South Africa, 159 for two. And that's a very, very good shot from Dave Callahan. He tried it once before off Thompson and Murphy Sewer, unfortunately, at long off, unfortunately, long on, sorry, for New Zealand, put what was a relatively easy catch down. Not to see the South African batsman improvising, and that really is a very good shot. There was a ball a little bit wider from Murphy Sewer, and uh, he did play it, and obviously in Test Match Cricket, that one might have been allowed to go through, but uh, Daryl Cullinan showing the very good player he is, and... Uh, stroking the ball wide of third man but hit it well enough off the middle very important time for Dave Callahan who's 98 not out at this stage as he plays a predetermined shot and that could be his hundred he's scampering through for one he's turning and he's got his century and the crowd has risen as one and we can see the elation from the South African team and Dave Callahan and what a milestone that is for him a good chance for a wicket here as Brian Young is around the boundary just gets it in his hand, bobbles it twice, and it drops over the boundary for six. A very good effort by Brian Young. Had he held it the first time, I don't know if he would have stayed inside the boundary line, but he can see the funny side of it. Slightly out of his reach, but he made a very, very valiant effort. Daryl Cullinan hitting it high. Brian Young already taking a magnificent catch early today. He almost does the same again, trying to keep inside the boundary. Well, that will go for six. In fact, that's gone 10 rows back. That's a huge hit from Dave Callahan. Well, this is out. Mistimed by Daryl Cullinan. And Shane Thompson just runs around and takes a reasonably straightforward catch at mid-on. So the third South African wicket falls. There he goes, Daryl Cullinan, Court Thompson, bowled Sewer for 38. And in the 43rd over, South Africa, 239 for three. And of course, this is the highest score by any South African in limited overs internationals. And this one's gone for six. Well, he's, he's just ripping up the record books, Dave Callahan. The previous highest score by our South African in one day international cricket was 112. And we'll see on the Bank of New Zealand replay, just leaned back into the shot and wafted it over long on for six runs. Well, I don't think Dave Callahan is really going to have the time to threaten the highest ever one day international innings. And in fact, there's a wicket here. 
Mike Rindle just flirting outside the off stump and Murphy Sewer picks up his second wicket so it's a good reward for him he's come back very well after conceding 17 runs off his first over Rindle just trying to glide that one down to third man and well, why wouldn't Murphy Sewer be excited as you can see on the Bank of New Zealand replay just the faintest of touches well this time he's out again that's two wickets in the over from Murphy Sewer So that's a great comeback, not just by New Zealand but also by Murphy Sewer. A little bit wayward in his opening over. And on the Bank of New Zealand replay you can see this one wide outside the off stump, Rhodes chased it. And a very comfortable catch there for Adam Perori. It's his second catch of the over. And again that's just swatted away, backward of square, four more runs to Dave Callahan. As Murphy Sewer comes in again, and again there's that swing across the line from Dave Callahan. There's four more runs. As he faces Murphy Sewer. And that's very good fielding by Chris Pringle, and they're calling for the replay. Carl Levenberg, the square leg umpire, he's not sure. I tend to think the batsman just might be safe. We'll look at the Bank of New Zealand replay in just a second. But that's good fielding from Pringle, but again another cheeky shot from Callahan as he swept the seam bowler so there's the panna eye in fact he is out he's out by quite a bit so well done Chris Pringle another big hit to out to wide mid on Brian Young comes around and so that now is the highest ever score by South Africa in a one day international they've beaten their previous best at 288 for two against India it was in Delhi in 1991-92 and that was their third ever one day international when they got their highest score then and so they've gone one better today Chris Pringle, he's done well for New Zealand today not that that's him 10 overs for 40 under the circumstances, 4 runs and over very good bowling indeed so Chris Pringle's done himself proud and Dave Callaghan, 149 and now 150 well played that's a very very well played inning with a standing ovation one or two people running on Dave Kellen very happy with himself today, salutes the crowd. And he should be gone this time as Ken Rutherford, the New Zealand captain, goes back, takes the catch. And well done, Murphy Sewer strikes again, that's his fourth wicket, four for 55. Eric Simon really in a situation where he's got to have a bit of a go, he takes some risks, try and get the ball to the boundary. Well, he had three goes at doing that. And on this occasion, it's been Ken Rutherford, so the Bank of New Zealand replay will show well, Wally, you call it. Well, he's again tried to hit that over deep mid-off. He's got inside out, got slightly underneath it, and for the third time in the over, he's hit it airily out towards cover. This time, not quite getting onto it, and Ken Rutherford, New Zealand captain, goes back. Little toss, and with away, and Mark Priest does stop it. It doesn't. In fact, it's just rolled over the boundary, so that's four. <laughs> they'll, obviously have get up, they'll obviously get up to win. Another full toss, played square on the offside, and they're back for two. And the umpire has called for the replay. And Dave Callahan, well, you see with his out, David Orchard there, the umpire at square leg. Good return, came in. And of course, the batsman must be looking to run the twos, and so you take risks. Adam Perori. Just watch it, the Bank of New Zealand replay will show that he's in. In fact, why has the umpire called for that? You might well ask, Warren. Well, it's the easy way out. Probably the safe way out, Richard. Sometimes they just say, let's always ask for the panerai. Let's have it. make sure that we don't make mistakes. But on that occasion, I think uh, you'll find the batsman. And there it is. Yeah, but not safely two home. feet past, surely. Well, it becomes a habit with them, doesn't it, really? And that's going to go for four runs as it lands about six inches inside the boundary. Simon Dahl absolutely on a hiding to nothing. There's very little he can do except try and get them right up there in the block hole. And of course, Callahan can make those into full tosses. So that really is a length ball and a full swing there, a full arc. The Bank of New Zealand replay will show that's just gone inside. See the bit of a divot there. And the man at long on is fairly wide. That's Mark Priest. Look at that, the last 50 and 35 balls and really those 50s coming very quickly 
and so he's got it up in the block hole except this time it's a full toss so what he tried to do was right but you can't stop this man uh, there's a magnificent innings no matter what he touches today is going to turn into boundaries towards the end of the innings four off two balls ago that one a little bit fuller full toss six Mark Priest had a four hit on one side of him now six hit on the other side yeah, sometimes you want to actually bowl a low full toss or a Yorker try and get it up there but that was perhaps just a little bit too high and again the Bank of New Zealand replay will show that he's an unbelievable look at that that's cheeky again as he sweeps it just behind square he's going to go for two and it could be tight if the throws better poor return for Brian Young as Simon Dole runs into the bowl the last ball of the innings and he'll only get a single so that'll make it 314 for seven Callahan will move to 100 and 69 and undoubtedly a great standing ovation very happy man leaving Centurion Park 169 not out in a one day international magnificent performance and some very very fine batting in that he's hit 19 fours four sixes and Dave Callahan certainly the man of the moment South Africa through to 314 for seven or 50 overs what a fine effort but for the New Zealanders Really, they can't waste their time at lunchtime. They've got to sit down. They've got to discuss the way of going out and attacking this total. Richard, I think we could have a fine afternoon. So funny, De Villiers just causing Brian Young a few problems there. There's one slip in a gully in position. Perhaps South Africa could look to pick up a couple of wickets here and perhaps have another slip in position as well. But then again, they're looking perhaps more at uh, safety with all those runs on the board. that certainly is not the start that New Zealand have wanted so Mike Rindell is the man a miscued pull shot there from Stephen Fleming and perhaps not short enough to play it and really he's just pulled it straight to mid on and Rindell coming round there to take a fairly simple catch big disappointment for Stephen Fleming let alone the New Zealanders good start for South Africa back of New Zealand replay will show well he wasn't in very good position really was he well he, well, he certainly didn't move his feet he didn't get into a wonderful position but typical of the South African bowlers they just hurry on a little bit has cramped him up, sort of spliced him a wee bit, and all he could really end up doing was hitting it up in the air to mid on. Another good catch taken, but really not the not the sort of start New Zealand wanted. Stephen Fleming out for a duck, and of course New Zealand one for none. Well, he's got into leg stump there, and as soon as they get into leg stump, the New Zealand is scoring it well. Moving his feet that time, trying to get down to the pitch of it. Well, there's no fielder position there, and that's just fallen inside the boundary, just short of the boundary by about a foot or two. And so Brian Young now has got that one away for the second time now. And Brian Young's got that one away. In fact, he's got it away for six runs. And so that's a wonderful shot there from Brian Young. Very positive. New Zealand will now move to 27 for one at the end of the eighth and perform well, that's beaten the cover field and Brian Young comes back for two as Mike Rindle does the fielding well that's a crashing shot by Brian Young put it over the extra cover region and that's gone for four yes he's put his foot down the wicket he's hit through the line of the ball there's been a slight away movement therefore he's got the outside edge Open the face a little bit, it's gone over the top of cover for four. Bank of New Zealand replay, there he is heading through it, probably aiming it down towards mid off a little bit more, it's, as I say it's, it's been inside out a little bit, it's gone over the top of cover. Ryan Young very happily takes four runs. And here's again. And he's out. Ryan Young just scooped it straight into the hands of Andrew Hudson at a very short mid wicket. A loss of concentration there from Brian Young. He'd already tried to charge Craig Matthews in this over, and again, the, the bowler wins the battle. Bank of New Zealand replay sees Young just chip it into mid-wicket. We were talking before when Richard Hadley was on with us. Couldn't understand the slip going over to mid-wicket, but I can understand exactly what Hansi Cronje was looking for now. Ryan Young's been trying to fetch it on the onside. So the second New Zealand wicket has fallen, that of Brian Young for 27. And in the 10th over, New Zealand now 37 for two. And Lifani de Villiers to bowl the first ball of his sixth over. 
and that's a great shot from Adam Perori basically just stood and delivered well that one's cleared the field and that'll race away for four well it's hardly a push towards point but it's well up it's just outside off stump Rutherford just leans into it and hits it clear of extra cover this one's pulled away by Rutherford and this one will go for four through mid wicket well again he drifts into middle and leg New Zealanders are very keen to chip it over the le over the onside and he's hit it over the top of uh, the mid wicket position out towards the boundary and he gets four runs Bank of New Zealand replay there it is he picks it up quite high doesn't quite time it the way he'd like but he's a very very happy man to pick up another four runs and Rutherford moves on to nine and Rutherford's got runs this time slashing him backward of point for four runs that's certainly an area where Ken Rutherford scored a lot of runs during his career. Just gives himself a little bit of room, leans back, and he whacks it in between point and gully and takes four runs. On the Bank of New Zealand replay, that certainly has been a favourite shot of Ken Rutherford over the last few years. May have got him out one or two times recently, but in one day cricket, you've got to take your chances. He hit it very well. Bisected the field perfectly there, Ken Rutherford. And this time he's put it high in the air. He could be out. The man's coming in off the fence. And he's out. It's a very, very fine catch. Falling away from him. But unfortunately for New Zealand, it also sees the back of Ken Rutherford. He's just taken a very good ball through the offside. Tried to loft the next delivery through mid-wicket. Got underneath it. Picked it up a little bit down towards fine leg. Very, very high in the air. On the Bank of New Zealand replay, you can see just a top edge there from Ken Rutherford. And... Craig Matthews coming in off the fence and taking a, a well a well judged catch on his fingertips. So that's tragedy for New Zealand. The necessity to keep the run rate ticking over has cost them their captain. And Ken Rutherford, the third wicket to fall. He's out for 14. And in the 13th over, New Zealand now 60 for three. Sure. The wicket believes he can only bat for 25 overs. Well, he's going to score at a fairly good rate in order for New Zealand to get up there somewhere near the South African total. This one's cut away by Adam Perori. And that's gone for four. Now we're starting to get down into the middle order. This one's swung away by Adam Perori. Moving into the shot on the line outside off stump. And swings him away through mid on for four. Adam Perori talking to Martin Crowe there. And at the end of the over, New Zealand have moved through to 75 for three. That's a very good shot from Martin Crowe. It should fall just inside the boundary, and that's going to race away for four runs. So that's the first boundary for Martin Crowe, and the New Zealand momentum in the innings is picking up. It's just a pity they've lost uh, three wickets. In the Bank of New Zealand replay, quite clearly, Richard Snell is struggling with his line and length. Well, what New Zealand needs now is a good partnership between these two. Take them to more or less three-quarter of the innings, and uh, hopefully still be up there with the run rate. Well, he just hasn't got it right. But this is good news for New Zealand, of course. And Martin Crowe's going to work hard, and he's out. Well, what a waste. Poor delivery, fine shot, outstanding fielding. And New Zealand have lost the big wicket there of Martin Crowe. And I just wonder whether his judgment was right. We know that he's got a bad knee, and he struggles. And really has given it away. The Bank of New Zealand replay, a free hit. And that man out there, who was it, Omar? That's Callahan. Well, what a game he's had. 169 with the bat. There he is. Good return. And Crow is well short. No need for the replay there. Look at that. That's uh, bad news. Poor cricket by the New Zealanders. Well, it's certainly a big blow. You see he's a metre short, at least. And so Martin Crow has gone. He's been run out for six. New Zealand, 82 for four. So Adam Ferrari is going to get four runs there. Well, they're all very useful runs, and New Zealand must be positive. They must keep those runs coming, and even if they get bowled out for 180, we've still got to keep playing. No point uh, being defensive. The New Zealand replay will show that Adam Ferrari is very well organised and just opened the face of the bat, ran it down very fine. Of course, third man had no chance. So New Zealand, well, you might as well uh, be bowled out. 
Yeah, well, absolutely better bowled. You see, there you can see that he's, he's, he's producing them from nowhere, and it, 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 it almost looks from a same delivery. Uh, Derek Simons now bowling to Thompson. Drive straight, firm drive, and that's going to race away for four runs. So this is what New Zealand have needed from a player like Thompson. Likes to hit the ball, times it well, and the Bank of New Zealand replay will show that he really has got everything right there. You'd like that one, Omar? Well, nice and easy, good timing. And uh, this is the difference between him and Young. Young was trying to hit the leather of the ball, never placed them. There's Adam Perori innovating a little bit, and that's gone straight over mid-off, and that's gone for six runs. And that, too, is a very fine shot from Adam Perori, who now races to 42. And coming down the pitch there, giving himself a bit of room to free his arms, and he's hit that one right over mid-off. And the Bank of New Zealand replay there, he's hit that very crisply indeed. And so there's been plenty of boundaries today, plenty of action here at Centurion Park in Pretoria. Eric Simon to Perori. And he's going to get a couple here. In fact, they will look for three, and that's good running between the wickets. I've always wondered about um, Richard Hadley, what the places he can get into on this trip. All doors seem to open. I just wonder whether Knights of the Realm have a special pass. Well, I wouldn't know, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm unlikely to know. No, he certainly has met some very important people, but he's uh, certainly enjoying himself. Very popular over here in South Africa. And this could be out. In fact, it's not. It's six. Well, the ball's actually taken on the boundary. The fielder out there, Hudson, catches it cleanly, but as he catches it, he steps over the boundary, and of course, any sort of rules in any cricket, that's six. In the Bank of New Zealand replay, you can see Andrew Hudson, Hudson takes a very well-judged catch, but then overbalances over the rope. Well, that's a tragedy for the fielder, isn't it? Now that's been lofted down the park, well over mid on. Snell comes racing around the boundary, dives valiantly but can't get to it. And another four runs scored to New Zealand as Thompson goes forward on the bank of New Zealand replay. Here's Snell coming around the boundary now. And this is a great effort to stop it, but he can't quite get to it. So it's uh, Mike Rindle. <laughs> another good shot by Shane Thompson off the front foot and played out to almost out to the cover boundary. There's some good fielding out there, but good running between the New Zealanders. Thompson comes back for the third run. Goodness gracious, I can't catch my breath. Well, that's a great tackle there by the security guard. He's away again. But couldn't he change the complexion of this match if he can bowl like he batted today? Well, certainly, Eric, the way he batted. Uh, he'll be thinking of miracles when he bowls. Looks like Perori now in strike to Callahan. No and he's no balled. Well, it was almost a tragedy there for New Zealand. The throw from Donty Rhodes was wide. As you can see on the Bank of New Zealand replay. The first part of the drama was that Dave Callahan overstepped. The second part was that Jonty Rhodes fielded well. And the third part was that his throw was wide and wrong-footed with both fielders. There's a run here for Perori down to third man. Yes, every run saved at this stage. Every run under six and over is a bonus for the South African team. And it just it makes it a little bit harder at the other end. That's the end of the over. New Zealand 177 for four. Jumbo. Well, the crowd was certainly more interested in that appeal than perhaps the bowler himself, Mike Rindle. Dave Richardson certainly did ask the question, and on the Bank of New Zealand replay, well, there was certainly no pad involved. And if there was a sound, it could only be bat, but it wasn't convincing. Certainly not convincing from the bowler.
So perhaps the South Africans now are just a little bit rattled. New Zealand are in striking distance. Just a little bit of sanity back in the commentary box now that Eric Young has departed. And welcome back, Richard. It's good to have you here. And that's going to go through. Could be bonus runs for New Zealand. It's gone for four overthrows, so that is a five. Well, that's good news for New Zealand, and things just picking up now. Bank of New Zealand replay will show that there wasn't a lot of backing up at all. And that ball just pushed on the onside. Picked up there by Cullinan. Tried to throw the stumps down, had he hit. Well, I think you'd find that Thompson was, uh, was out of his crease. So be it. The point is no one was backing up. New Zealand will take the advantage of five runs. Well, this man Adam Perori is playing a fine knock for New Zealand. Well, there's the wicket South Africa have been looking for. The wicket New Zealand didn't want to lose. Shane Thompson out, caught behind by Richardson. Off the bowling of Callaghan. Shane Thompson out for 39. A very fine partnership between Thompson and Perori. But unfortunately, New Zealand have lost their fifth wicket. 106 runs in that partnership. Ford Richardson bowl, Callaghan 39. 188 for five. Sun broken through the overcast sky that we've had for most of the day. Mike Rindle back into the attack. And of course, Adam Perori looking for that one run. That's very elusive, but well-deserved century. Yes, but the thing is that he must get that run very quickly. But if the ball's there to be hit before, it must go as well. Major milestone for him. Very important for the team as well. And well played, Adam Perori, as that is his first one-day international century. He's happy about that. Punches the year. And the New Zealand players in the dressing room balcony area, there they are, they're standing. Martin Crowe missed out today, but you will know that that is a very, very fine innings indeed. Yes, Harris under just a little bit of pressure. He by three maiden balls at the start of this over for Mike Rindle. He came down the wicket, it tucked him up a little bit. He tried to turn it on the onside. And similar to Brian Young, when he got out, he's just chipped it in the air quite flat straight into short mid wicket and Chris Harris departs yes a little bit of panic here and uh, not really good play I think we'd have to say that but that's a wonderful catch by Cronier New Zealand 215 for six still looking at around seven and a half and over and he's got onto that very well out to wide mid wicket and it's unfortunately for New Zealand they've lost the wicket of Adam Perori down the wicket lifts it into the onside a wicket we did not need to lose at this stage, but a fine innings by Adam Perori has come to an end. Adam Perori out for 108. That really was, as Warren says, the wicket that New Zealand didn't need to lose. And the South Africans can't quite believe their luck. You see Adam Perori not quite getting on to this one as he tries to force it over the mid-wicket boundary. And Daryl Cullinan takes a very well-judged catch. It's Murphy Sewer to face Mike Rindle. Again, he tries to dab it down to third man and just goes past the outside edge of the bat. So Dave Callahan again to Murphy Sewer. He's taken high on the pad and he's given out. Well, Dave Callahan has made the breakthrough again. That's his third wicket. And I think that's pretty much wrapped up the man of the match award. 169 not out, a fine run out and three wickets. But really, Jake Bannister, this looked to take Murphy Sewer rather high on the pad. When it's pitched on, it's straightened just a touch, but it's certainly above the roll, and that had to be looked at from a question of height. Umpire Orchard said, fine, let's have a look from side and see what else we can see. Well, it's above the roll. So disappointed, Murphy Sewer, out for one. Two, one, six for eight. Well, this one's just a short arm jab from Simon Dool, and that would have been a magnificent catch from Daryl Cullinan. Running backwards, leaning back with one arm, he threw himself at the ball, he got a hand to it. He's laughing because he can afford to, because it was a great attempt, and it's been tipped over the boundary for, for six. It was a great effort, it really was. This is wide of the off stump, and there's a full flourish from Simon Dool and that'll race away for four backward of point and he's out caught behind well he had to do it we just had a comparison in between overs announced that uh, at this stage with 10 overs to go New Zealand were 11 ahead of 
South Africa with the crucial difference is the wickets in hand. They had Callaghan, who got the 100. New Zealand have lost uh, a ninth wicket here now, and really that is that. 233 for nine. Uh, New Zealand in the 41st over. And really it's all gone horribly wrong. They lost four early wickets, recovered with the partnership between Adam Perori and Shane Thompson. And once they went, it was all downhill from there. And Mark Priest is out. So that's the end of the New Zealand innings. South Africa has won, and has won very, very well. 81 run win to South Africa. So Hansi Cronier has led his team to three straight successes now in this Mandela Trophy series. Disappointment for Mark Priest, obviously. Mark Priest comes forward. Stops the shot a little bit, doesn't go right through it and just chips it back to the bowler. Simons takes the, the catch to end the match. And of course, New Zealand, unfortunately, all out for 233. Ken Rutherford.